I'm Caleb. I'm actually just a very normal person, just like any one of you today. But I would like to share with you now in this session is that how a normal person can actually prevent cancer through your diet. Okay, so I'm the dietitian, Caleb. So uh, for the next 40 minutes or so, I will be presenting to you on some overviews of cancer very really quickly. Then I'll move on to the general guidelines in preventing cancer. Next, I'll move on to the multi-steps of cancer development. Then next, we'll delve into different challenges that, might, that you might need to overcome when you're planning a diet that helps to fight against cancer. Then lastly, we'll discuss in detail on some different diet advantages that have been proven in some studies that can help to fight against cancer. Okay, so let's take some time to appreciate the death of normal cells before we move on to uh, how, how do cancer cells occur in the body. So I will just go through very quickly. Actually, in all the cells in our body, right, we have these different signals to control how much and how often the cell divides. Okay, but however, when there's like, uh, so when the time is up, for example, like, um, for example, like red blood cell, they can live up to 90 to 120 days. So when the time is up, the signal will be activated and the signal will induce a programmed cell death. We call it the process as apoptosis. But what happens in cancer is that when there's activation of cancer gene, or we call oncogenes, when there's activation, and the activated cancer genes will lead to an abnormal cell or mutated cell or zombie cell. They will keep on dividing in an uncontrolled way. So actually, day in and day out, this process will occur in the body. So it really depends on how your body system and how your diet and your lifestyle neutralize this or kill or de detect this mutated cell timely and, and destroy them. So, but when things gone out of control, this is where the mutated cell will start growing into a growth and can be categorized as benign tumor or malignant tumor. So especially in the advanced stage of can cancer, in malignant tumor, they will start invading or spreading into other parts of the body, the process we call metastasis. So again, I go through quickly on the different causes of cancer. There are total on these slides, I will present to you seven factors that we can control and the other three factors are the factors that we can't control or we can't uh, really do something about it. Okay, so let's start with the modifiable risk factor, the things that we can control and we can change. First will be tobacco use. Secondly, unhealthy diet. Next will be sedentary lifestyle and overweight, followed by alcohol abuse, viral infection, like what Dr. Luke has mentioned earlier, is that the human papilloma virus, which can be vaccinated, is uh, one of the causes, one of the many causes of cancer of the penis, anus, vagina, and so on. Next will be hormonal imbalance. For example, in female, if one of the breakdown of estrogen by name of alpha, 16 alpha hydroxyestrone, we call it a subtype number 16 of this estrogen metabolite. If it's too high in the female body, this subtype of estrogen will actually trigger DNA mutation in hormone-sensitive organs, for example, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and so on. While in males, one of the causes of prostate cancer can be imbalance of one of the breakdown of testosterone by name of dihydroxy testosterone, or simply put DHT. If DHT is too high in the male body, it can trigger DNA mutation in the prostate cell. Next, Okay, there goes the, non, the modifiable risk factors, the factors that we can actually manage. Next, you move on to the factors that we can uh, control. First is family history. Next will be sun and other radiation. Lastly, will be environmental pollutants. But bear in mind that um, no matter what kind of chronic diseases, including like cancer, diabetes, high cholesterol, or hypertension, the modifiable risk factors will play a more prominent role comparing to no, the non-modifiable risk factors. Because if we can really manage the modifiable risk factors, we can actually prevent probably 60% of the occurrence of chronic diseases, including cancer. So all these causes of cancer will actually lead to DNA mutation. Like what I mentioned earlier, DNA and day out, some of the cells will get mutated, the DNA will get mutated. So it depends on our system and also our diet and lifestyle. How do we neutralize or how do we kill the mutated cell timely before they have time to develop into tumor or cancer? Okay, so now I will play, I will go through a very simple activity with you guys. Is that we need to identify the carcinogens. Carcinogens means the substances that have the cancer-causing potential in the body. So first, 
This is the representation of moldy grains. Do you think moldy grains will cause cancer? Yes, okay. What about salted fish? Yes. <laughs> okay. Next, this, uh, what about charred meat or barbecued meat? Yes. Will it cause cancer? Okay. Okay, what about processed meat like bacon, bakwa, lap cheong, Chinese sausages, and so on? Okay, yes. Okay, tobacco smoke, yes, definitely. Alcohol abuse, excessive drinking, yes. What about red meat? Okay, so most of you think red meat will cause cancer. What about hot beverages? No? Okay, well, some yes, some no. Lastly, french fries. Carbohydrate that undergone high temperature cooking methods. Yes, okay, let's go through. First one, moldy grains. They contain a group of toxins that's produced by fungus or moles. And the group of toxins is by the name of mycotoxins. Mycotoxins will include the aflatoxin, acrotoxin A, and so on. So this group of toxins, right, may be the causes, may be the few causes of liver cancer or kidney cancer. So yes, it has the carcinogens. Salted fish, yes, because uh, especially the Chinese style, when we salt the fish and we steam it, so this one will cause more carcinogens in the salted fish, especially one of the chemicals by name of n nitroso compounds is a, is a carcinogen that will cause nasopharyngeal cancer. Next, charred meat or barbecued meat, yes, it contains like heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon, PAH. How does it occur is that when we, especially the fatty or the oily meat, right, when we grill or when we do barbecue, the fats or the juice will drip on the heating medium underneath, for example, if it's charcoal, so it will get vaporized and the vapor will stick onto the meat and the vapor will turn into the carcinogens, which are the PAH and also the heterocyclic amines. Next will be processed meat that contains a lot of chemicals, including nitrates, nitrites, or also the n nitroso compound, not forgetting the saturated fats. So together, yes, they may cause cancer, especially cancer of the colon. Tobacco smoke, yes. Uh, tobacco smoke itself contains around 7,000 of chemicals. Out of the 7,000 chemicals, 70 has identified to have cancer-causing potential. Alcohol abuse, yes. Alcohol, Scientifically, we call them ethanol. When we, when we consume ethanol, ethanol will be metabolized into one of the toxic compounds by the name of acetaldehyde. This acetaldehyde is the cause of cancer when we are talking about alcohol. Red meat. Okay, red meat I will categorize in blue is because the risk of causing cancer is just a moderate risk. So in fact, for red meat, right, the recommended intake for red meat in preventing cancer is not too strict actually. You can take up to four to five servings of red meat per day, uh, per week, sorry. So one serving <laughs> will be like one of your palm size without the finger part and the thickness will be like my, the thickness of my hand. Okay, so you can take four to five servings and in, instead of taking red meat, replace with white meat, fish, or uh, plant protein. Okay? So because studies have shown that for those that eat a lot of red meat, right, probably they will displace the nutritious uh, food ingredients, for example, vegetables, fruits, and also the lean meat. So owing to this reason, control your red meat intake but replace with something healthier. Hot beverages, no, it is not a cause of cancer. But I need to mention earlier, if you can remember, Dr. Luke and also Dr. Jandana just now they did mention that when a person drinks alcohol and smoking, they, both of them will cause synergistic uh, disadvantage or risk to the body in terms of cancer. So the third thing that I want to add into that two relationship is actually hot beverages. So there are some studies showing that those that drink and smoke, and when they drink hot drinks, yes, they will have a more increased risk of getting cancer. But for those who do not smoking and not drinking at all, Hot beverages is not a practical or it's not a realistic cause of cancer because uh, studies have shown that in animal studies, of course, to, to have a hot beverage to cause cancer, one person has to ingest 90 ml of fluid at the temperature of 80 degrees Celsius and above. So this temperature and with this volume, it will cause DNA mutation in the esophagus. So I would say that if we drink around 90 ml of 60 degrees Celsius of liquid, we already feel the burning. So I don't think anyone can drink 90 ml of 80 degrees Celsius liquid all at once.